At this time, I call to order the regular meeting of the Maricopa County Community College District Governing Board for December the 10th, 2019. To lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance is Orrin Shepard, President, Phoenix College, United Student Government. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have one substitute tonight, Scott Schultz, Vice President, Academic Affairs, representing President Teresa Labo Ruiz. And now for the student life reports, representatives from Phoenix College. Good evening, President Thor, members of the board, Dr. Harper Marinick, members of the CEC and guests. My name is Lauren Shepard, president of the PC United Student Government. My major is in psychology and I'll graduate in 2020. It is an honor to stand before you and with our 2019-2020 PC United Executive Team. PC United is proud to be one of the 35 active clubs to represent the flagship of the Maricopa Community College District. This year, Phoenix College begins celebrating our past and our students' future. We are celebrating 100 years of equity, access, and opportunity. And we are still going strong. <laughs> PC grew from its first class of 18 students to more than 12,000 all gathered on a 50-acre campus in the heart of Phoenix. PC has a long history as a pioneering institution with a special place in Phoenix and Arizona history. PC's founders envision the college as a place of inclusion, and the college continues to be a place of diversity, equity, and access. <coughs> PC is more than just a school. We're part of the community. I hope that you can join us next year for our centennial, centennial events. Our campus is continuously busy with <clears throat> campus activities and community events since we are at the heart of Phoenix. My fellow executives are proud to tell you about some of them. Good evening. My name is Yasmin Garcia, and I'm the Vice President of Academics at Phoenix College. My major is Arts, and I will be graduating in 2021. From its beginning in 1920, Phoenix College adopted a non-segregated policy and offered unequal access to higher education for all who wanted to improve their lives through learning. A multicultured and diverse student population became the hallmark of Phoenix College. During Native American Heritage Month in November, we hosted a missing and murdered indigenous women panel with four women, Jennifer Germain, uh, Arizona State Representative District 18, Monica Anton, Lieutenant Governor of the Gia River Indian Community, Monica and, excuse me, Debbie Nuez Manuel, and Val Imus Nazahoya, who were instrumental in the creation and approval of the House Bill 2570, <clears throat> recently signed by Governor Doug Ducey. This event was impactful to the 80 students and faculty that attended. We also had Dr. Iris Pretty Paint provide a comprehensive training through Native American culture awareness to our faculty and staff. 
Our highlight event was the Tunnel of Oppression in November. The Tunnel of Oppression was an interactive theater experience in which participants walk through different scenes designed to show the 10 stages of genocide. We had 362 students, staff, and community members pass through the tunnel. With the support of our faculty members, classes were able to attend this event. Equity continues to be the heart of PC's focus. Good evening. My name is Jantasia Taylor, the Vice President of Advocacy. My major is secondary education and I'll be graduating in 2019. We know our students are busy and we want to provide access to benefits that will help them succeed. DES visited campus to assist students with, with applying for state benefits to help them with their everyday lives. We support our students with food insecurities by providing them with lunches and weekend bags so they can focus on school and not hunger. Through our PC Pantry and our partners with St. Mary's Food Bank, we provide healthier and more sustainable options for students. We continue to help approximately 250 students per week with lunches and weekend bags. On November 26, we hosted an Adult Team 101 holiday budgeting and Friendsgiving dinner for our students. Holiday budgeting was presented by Maria Luna from Shark Tank and is part of our continued financial literacy teaching. Afterwards, we fed over 140 students and community members and gave away 45 Thanksgiving dinners to our students. Chef Stephanie Green, PC's Food and Nutrition Facility uh, faculty and service learning students from five classes help prepare and serve five turkeys with all the fixings. Safeway Aberson's graciously donated the Thanksgiving dinner <coughs> distributed to our students. With the help of our athletic team, classes, faculty, and staff, we continue to provide access to help our students succeed with the long, with the, which in the long run will help provide, promote students' engagement and retention. Good evening. My name is Maria Rodriguez, and I'm the student government representative of PC STEAM Club. My major is applied computing, and I graduate in May of 2020. On September 13th, Phoenix College celebrated its 99th birthday with a proclamation by the City of Phoenix Mayor, Kate Gallego, that September 13th will be known as Phoenix College Founders Day. Kate Gallego, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. We are dedicated to providing access to valuable and affordable education and developing relevant programs for all. In line with the district transformation, PC hosted a Fields of Interest Day. In, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> I wish students were able to meet one-on-one -on -one with their advisors and faculty. The event was well attended and very engaging for students who were excited to meet their advisors and faculty for their program of study. Another successful event was the PC STEAM Day. We had over 400 students attend <clears throat> and students from two local high schools. Students who attended this event were able to connect with industry, community, and university partners. They heard presentations from experts in various fields and learned about career opportunities, internships, PC programs, and transfer opportunities in STEM fields. PC continues to provide opportunities to all who want to obtain an education. Good evening, my name is Alexa Castillo and I am the secretary of PC United Student Government. My major is fashion design and I'll be graduating in 2021. We continued our homecoming tradition this year with the theme 90s are all that. We had various <laughs> events throughout the week including our club shopping cart decorating contest which focused on 90s movies, TV shows, or music. The winner was The Magic School Bus with a special appearance from Mrs. Frizzle. We crowned our king and queen, Nick Miro and Monica Pinuelas, and they each received a $500 scholarship. Creating opportunities to build tradition and create engagement at PC is extremely crucial. Just this weekend, PC United hosted the Magic Morning 3K Walk to benefit the Foster Hope Foundation. We collected a $5 registration fee or a tow donations for kids who were removed from their homes during this special holiday season. It was a great success and we had 67 tow donations and $100 cash donated. 
The PC women's basketball team also decided to sponsor a girls group home to sponsor their wish list this holiday season as well. We plan to do this again to benefit other organizations around the Phoenix Valley, as well as continuing our, our support for the Foster Hope Foundation and foster kids around Arizona. Thank you. Phoenix College may be 100 years old, but we sure are going strong. <laughs> We are thankful that we can still provide equity, access, and opportunity for our students and community. As Dr. Johnson says, the best is yet to come, and we look forward to that. Thank you, Dr. Johnson's, Johnson, for your continued support and innovative ideas. Lastly, we thank the governing board for your time tonight and your continued support of Phoenix College. And lastly, we wish you all a happy holiday. Go, Go Bears! Bears! <laughs> Nice job, student leaders. Do board members have any comments or questions? We wish you happy holidays, too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have three Emeritus Distinction Awards this evening. Dr. Peterson, would you like to introduce your honorees? President Thorpe, may I, if I may invite uh, Dr. Guerrero up to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Guerrero. Thank you, President Thor, members of the Governing Board, Chancellor Harper Marinick, CEC members, and guests. It's my privilege uh, tonight to introduce to you three very distinguished emeritus faculty from Chandler Gilbert. And I've had the pleasure of working with these gentlemen for the entire time that I've been in Maricopa. That's been since 2003. I'm accepting this evening the first uh, distinction on behalf of Marcus Denton. Mark is overseas in Belgium on a mission and uh, is going to be gone uh, pretty much uh, the rest of this year and most of next. So you have in your materials uh, the accolades for Mr. Denton, and I invite you to read those over. I'd just like to highlight a couple things. Um, Mark was a faculty member as, as an adjunct uh, at Mesa Community College before coming to Chandler Gilbert and has served in this district as a full-time faculty member and a founding faculty member of uh, part of the Performing Arts Program at Chandler Gilbert in 1991. That's 27 years of service. Mark did send some remarks that I would like to read to you now. Education is about exploration and expectation. Through the years, I've been learned to value individual student needs through these seemingly opposite processes, allowing student time and flexibility to discover what they are passionate about is a necessity. Equally important is teaching a student about individual and communal responsibility, the why and how, the purpose and process has been integral to my teaching approach and in relationships I have with my students. Content is important, but secondary. And finally, inspiration and motivation are the true keys of a student's success. Music and the other arts intrinsically lift a person's spirit and often communicate in a way that no other medium or language can, inspiring and motivating us in all facets of our lives. I consider myself fortunate to have seen music and education change the lives of so many students. Thank you, Maricopa and CGCC, for allowing me your professional trust and support through these years. Thank you for this honored recognition. I shall cherish it. Sincerely, Marcus Denton. So, proceeding, uh, we do have our other two recipients with us this evening, and I would like to call to the podium Ted Walter. For 30 years and counting, Ted Walter has personified the fine arts at Chandler Gilbert and has served in a variety of leadership roles that demonstrate his versatility and collaborative nature. In addition to his extraordinary talent as an artist and teacher, Ted was instrumental in developing academic programs, including the Associate in Arts Fine Arts and Certificates in Digital Design and Media. Instructional facilities for two and three dimensional art instruction literally came to life under Ted's leadership. 
the studios in Choya and Ironwood Halls on Pecos, uh, Chandler Gilbert's Pecos campus serve as showcases and monuments to his creative vision. In his role as administrator of Chandler Gilbert's Public Art Fund, Ted assured students and employees would enjoy permanent art displays for years to come. Ted was instrumental in Chandler Gilbert's candidacy for accreditation and was active in each renewal process, including the most recent comprehensive visit in 2016. He served as chair of Chandler Gilbert's Communication and Fine Arts Division, was co-chair of the Division Chair Council, and led the college's Instructional, Council, uh, Instructional Technology Committee for four years. At the district level, Ted co-chaired the Art Instructional Council for 11 years and represented Chandler Gilbert in the Maricopa Priorities Task Force. He was named Chandler Gilbert's Educator of the Year in the 2014 Gilbert Excellence Awards Program and continues a personal tradition of excellence in teaching by serving as an adjunct art instructor to this day. Ted's contributions over 30 years of service to Chandler Gilbert have shaped the culture of the college and we're proud to recognize him with this emeritus distinction. Ted, would you like to say some words? Thank you so much for this honor. Uh, it means a lot to me. I will cherish this always. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful that you do this. Um, I'd also like to thank the uh, colleagues that I worked with for 30 years. It was a joy. Um, and the students who shared my passion for art. Uh, that was the way I taught, is just loving art and then sharing that love with my students. And then finally, I'd like to say thank you to my wife, who is my rock, who has been there all these years to support me and encourage me, and without whom none of this would make sense. So thank you, Nancy. And now I'd like to call to the podium a uh, gentleman that I've referred to often as the hardest working man in show business, <laughs> Randy Wright. <clears throat> Randy was an adjunct at Chandler Gilbert for 10 years prior to his appointment as residential faculty. His long affiliation with Chandler Gilbert began in 1990 when he became director of the college's jazz band, which became an East Valley jazz institution that continues to this day. In 2000, when Randy began his full-time position with the support of President Arnett Scott Ward, he directed the establishment of a comprehensive instrumental music program at Chandler Gilbert, which would eventually encompass a concert band, a jazz combo, a string orchestra, and wind ensemble. Under Randy's leadership, Chandler Gilbert hosted annual jazz festivals for dozens of area high school jazz bands. The festivals served as recruitment opportunities for Chandler Gilbert bands, and solidified relationships between local high schools and Chandler Gilbert's music programs. The annual festivals also included clinics taught by renowned jazz musicians and composers from across the country. In 2006, Randy was named Maricopa District Fine Arts Coordinator by then Vice Chancellor and Provost Maria Hucker Marinick. He oversaw annual events including the Artists of Promise and competitions in music, art, dance, theater, and creative writing. In 2013, Randy became an integral part of the planning team for the complete reconstruction of Chandler Gilbert's performing arts rehearsal spaces, and the result was the college's first acoustically accurate band and choir rooms, along with two dance studios and multiple small rehearsal spaces. Randy was elected chair of the Communication and Fine Arts Division in 2015 and served for three years. His accomplishment as chair included leadership in institutional accreditation, strategic planning, budgeting, and hiring faculty members, residential faculty members in ceramics, photography, communication, theater, dance, and music. Randy's numerous contributions to his discipline, his leadership in the performing arts program at Chandler Gilbert, and his service to the district qualify him for consideration as emeritus distinction. I'm also proud to uh, let you know that Randy is a founding member of the college's rock band, The Dropouts. <laughs> <laughs> Going to have that distinction, and I'd like to welcome him to the podium now. <laughs> I had no idea he was going to say so many nice things. Uh, good evening, President Thor, members of the board, Dr. Maria Harper Peronik, members of the CEC, and guests. Uh, thank you so much for this 
honor uh, uh, of this recognition. I am extremely pleased. I, I can't tell you uh, how much I enjoyed hearing about this. Although I taught music for 26 years in the public schools, when it came to my 28-year tenure with Maricopa Colleges, the word opportunity is what came to mind. It's, it's been just, when I left the public schools and came to Maricopa, it was just a, a breath of fresh air for me. It was something uh, very amazing uh, for my, my, my uh, thought processes and the, the teaching that I wanted to do. I felt that I was always given the freedom and I was always encouraged to, I'm going to listen to things, develop my skills as an arts educator through professional development that included relevant travel workshops and seminars. Performing arts has been involved with collaborative learning, team building among students for centuries before they became new or innovative, something that's part of what we do is every day. Uh, it's not only inherent how we work, in most cases it's the only way we can work is, is in a group process. I was allowed to create a new instrumental music program at CGCC. I got to serve as a fine arts coordinator for four years, uh, organizing the Artists of Promise, which I'm reiterating what uh, Dr. Guerrero said, and I was always pleased to showcase our theater, music, art, creative writing, and dance students for the whole state to see. Uh, I was uh, offered to give input in re regarding the design and function architecture of the new Agave uh, Hall, which is what uh, Dr. Guerrero also said. This was the first time in CGCC's almost 30 years that had a dedicated space for music and dance, and, and I'm very proud of that building. Uh, I got to serve three years as uh, Fine Arts and Communication Chair, where I got to work with college leadership contributing to the college's <coughs> curriculum, schedule building, and budgeting procedures. Um, and I think some of the best thing is working with the people. Uh, not only the uh, people that worked at the college and worked at the district, but the students as well. And from our district administration, uh, some of the people that were the most influential to me are Dr. Rufus Glasper and Dr. Maria Harper Marinick. Uh, CGCC's administration, Drs. Arnett Scott Ward, Maria Hesse, and Bill Guerrero. And my college's division chairs, Diane Travers, Gordon Jesse, Sally Jesse, Kate O'Mara, Vanessa Sandoval, and tonight's fellow honoree, Ted Walter. The many people in visual arts, communication, the performing arts who were part of my di division were a pleasure to work with. And of course, the performing arts PAT faculty, which is where I spent most of my time with Gordon Jesse, Sally Jesse, Mark Denton, Ted Goddard, Tracy Miller, and Michaela Church, and our incredible administrative assistants, Iris Ishikawa and Dahlia Gonzalez. And I think we all know that these are the people who make our world go round. And Iris is here tonight. Stand up, Iris, please. <laughs> Iris, hey, give Iris a hand. Finally, getting the privilege to work with thousands of students from our community of every age and background to hopefully help them pursue their goals and dreams. I would like to take this opportunity. After 45 years of being a music educator and arts administrator, I cannot overstate the importance of nurturing and keeping the word community in our name and including arts education as an important part of what we do. It's proven, been proven many times that a student's involvement in the arts can contribute to retention in college and that exposure to the arts increases student performance in many other dis disciplines. And lastly, an education that includes the arts makes us all more human. Thank you. Oh. Well, congratulations to these outstanding faculty members. Uh, but Dr. Guerrero, it sounds to me like you've decimated the fine arts <laughs> department. <laughs> We're now at the Chancellor's report, uh, Dr. Harper Marinick. Thank you, Dr. Thor, members of the board. I too would like to say congratulations to Randy and Ted, not only for all the great work at the college, but the district leadership uh, also. We appreciate your service. Uh, we have uh, tonight the uh, introduction to the board of the Maricopa speech and debate uh, team. It's been in place two years, and I am going to ask uh, Scott Schultz from uh, Glendale Community College to make the formal introduction, but I would like to recognize the two faculty members who had the vision 
and did the work and insisted that we needed to have a district-wide debate, uh, speech and debate team, and that is uh, Dr. Pam Jorenstadt and uh, Dr. Jim Reed. Thank you both. So, um, Scott. Thank you. <coughs> President Thor, members of the governing board, Dr. Harper Mernick, members of the CEC and guests, uh, we're very honored this evening to be able to share our experiences and our outstanding uh, faculty and students that we have in the Maricopa Speech and Debate team. So at this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Pam Jordanstadt, the Communications Department Chair at Glendale Community College, to come forward to introduce the students. President Thor, members of the board, Dr. Maria harper uh members of the CEC. Uh, my name is Dr. Pam Jornstead, and I can clear a room like the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm Chair of Communication and World Languages at Glendale Community College. And uh, Glendale has always had an active speech and debate team since its inception in 1965. Uh, however, not all the colleges have had the opportunity to have that type of uh, experience for their students. So what I'd like to do is to talk just a little bit about the history of our team, talk about what our students do, and then finally I want to acknowledge some very important people who were a part of this process. Um, several years ago, uh, a group of students from Mesa came to the board and spoke to the board and asked them why they couldn't have a speech and debate team at Mesa. And uh, uh, given resources and a lot of things that go on at, you know, uh, at colleges, um, uh, Dr. Harper Marinette called Dr. Reed, who couldn't stay away despite the fact he's been retired for a couple of years, uh, uh, if we, it asked us, is there anything that you guys can do? Can you uh, work out a way that students at other colleges can participate on, uh, on the GCC forensics uh, uh, team? So we set out, oh, Sorry, <laughs> I'm hitting things. Uh, so we began the process of uh, beginning a, a, a district team uh, so that we could include students from the other campuses who might like to participate on a speech and debate team. Uh, Dr. Harper Marinick and, and our uh, Vice uh, Chancellor, Dr. Fisher, were instrumental in giving us a district coach who then can travel to the other schools and work with students and, and uh, as opposed to the students driving, our coach drives to the other schools to work with those students, um, which has proven incredibly successful. So far, we've had students who are from, uh, from PC, from Paradise Valley Community College, from Scottsdale, from Mesa, and from Australia Mountain Community College who are participating or have participated on the team in the last two years. Our team, right now, you can see our, 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 our uh, folks that are on our team right now who are uh, mostly from Glendale Community College, but we do have students from Estrella, from Scottsdale, and from PC who are participating on the team this semester. Uh, most of our competition is in, uh, in Southern California. Southern California is the hotbed of community college forensics, and they have tons of community colleges that participate, and it's where we mostly go for our students to be able to um, participate. They're in invitational tournaments, so students go compete in anywhere from two to five events, and then uh, they calculate a sweepstakes award for the overall winners from the colleges that may be out there. Uh, we also attend a couple of national tournaments, traveling, we attend a couple of national tournaments, uh, the Phi, Pi Kappa Delta National Tournament, which is a four-year national tournament, and we also attend the Phi Rho Pi National Tournament, which is a junior college-specific uh, 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 tournament. In fact, we have in our presence today the national debate champion who represented our school in two years ago, who was the national debate champion. Um, I could just articulate that what happens typically with our students is a student like, um, I would bring up uh, Kaylee Winslow, who was a Paradise Valley Community College student last year. She's in a public speaking class. Her teacher identifies her as a good speaker. We go and speak with her and say, hey, would you like to be on our team? And Kaylee is a very typical student who started as a beginner, and by the time she ended her career, she was a showcase participant at one of the national tournaments. And that's an incredible honor 
honor because you're selected as one of the finest presenters to be able to give your uh, presentation in front of a large group or a large um, audience. Um, I can keep moving here. We're always recruiting new members. We uh, go out to talk to all of the different uh, club fairs and those kinds of things. Um, we went to the Pasadena City College Tournament in Pasadena. Uh, when we went on to the Griffin Dolan Tournament in Grossmont College. You can see our pictures of our students. Tonight they're wearing their team jackets, but they usually, as you can see, dress up in suits and ties and, and, and those types of things. Perhaps one of the highlights for our students last weekend was they went to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. And I think it's really great that students can get out and become civically engaged and be able to um, participate and learn things that they wouldn't normally learn in a classroom setting. Um, but visiting the Reagan Library and going aboard Air Force One was quite a thrill for, for most of our students. Um, in fact, I'd like to point out that two of our current faculty members in the communication department were on our speech and debate team way back when, and both of them were finalists at the international tournament, in one of them in Prague and one of them in, in, in Germany. So we are growing our own, and we have new faculty members based upon students who have participated in this event. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Harper Marinick. Without her vision and without her support, we could have never gotten this to fruition. So with Dr. Fisher, who supported us through the Vice Provost's Office in terms of having a district-wide coach. I'd also like to thank uh, my president, Dr. Um, Labor Ruiz, and also uh, Scott and Dr. Lashinsky from Paradise Valley, um, who helped us develop a new model for how we can pay for our coaches without it being a backbreaker for our budgets. And, and without their support, we wouldn't have been able to hire our GCC coach, but we've investigated new ways of doing that. So how I see it is that we're maximizing potential with a minimum amount of resources. And we're allowing students to participate on this, and it's truly a one Maricopa team. Um, so what I'd like to do next is I'd like to uh, uh, let you meet your students, and here they are. Our first set of students are going to speak just a, a tiny bit longer about what the activity has meant to them, and our other students are going to introduce themselves, give them your major, and what their plans are for the future. But thank you very much for inviting us to come to the board today. This is really a, a I mean, we're, we're really excited that we have this program up and running and that we can provide opportunities for students from other colleges to participate in speech debate programs. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lindsay Gagnon and I am a general studies major with plans to transfer to the University of South Dakota. Good evening everyone, my name is Samantha Smithart. I am also a general studies major and I plan to transfer to the University of Arizona where I hope to pursue agricultural education. We are honored to have the opportunity to speak to you today on behalf of the entire Maricopa Speech and Debate team. We greatly appreciate the support that the Chancellor and Provost have provided to us to transition the already successful Glendale Community College team into a county-wide team that allows for more students to benefit from this incredible activity. Next year, some of our members will move from Maricopa County to pursue to pursue other opportunities, such as joining the Air Force, participating in an internship with Disney, and transferring to universities such as ASU and Missouri Valley College. Well, I will personally be attending the University of South Dakota in the fall. Joining speech and debate was initially a very intimidating prospect that I pushed myself to do to get more comfortable with speaking and performing in front of others, something I very much enjoy doing, but also experience a lot of anxiety attempting. Through the help of my coaching staff, Angelica, Kiefer, Roxanne, and Destiny, I have not only become more comfortable and confident in my abilities, but have been rewarded for my hard work at tournaments with advancing to final rounds and ranking high even in a large field of competitors. At this last tournament, I was one of six students who advanced to the final round of a field of 26 in prose interpretation. I ultimately was a finalist and received a medal that I wore all the way home, joking that someone would have had to pry it from my cold, dead hands because I worked so hard for it. <laughs> I know the trophy is just a symbol of how much I am growing as a speaker and a performer, and I hope to continue to grow in the time that I have left on this team and collect more symbols of my growth and hard work. 
I also initially joined the speech and debate team because I was hoping it would help me talk pretty, as my coaches would say, <laughs> and it would get me used to speaking in front of crowds. But I have gotten so much more of that in my last four months on the team. In forensics, I found a community full of people who are incredibly supportive and excited to share their passions. One of the best parts of each tournament is getting to see these new friends and how genuinely excited we are to see each other in each round or at each tournament. In each round, you get to learn about something new and exciting and share something with the audience that you also find really interesting. For me, that topic is always in some way related to agriculture. And this past weekend, I advanced my informative speech to the final round and placed third out of 14 students. Trophies are awesome, of course, but one day those are going to be collecting dust and the lessons I learned in my rounds and from my coaching staff are what's going to stick with me for the rest of my life. We are incredibly lucky that through your support we've gotten to experience so much and come so far in such a short period of time. We hope that you will continue to allow more students to learn and experience through speech and debate. Hello, my name is Daniel Evans. I am a sound design major and I will be transferring to ASU West in 2020. Hello, my name is Thomas Vogel. I'm a communications major and I'll be transferring to ASU in the fall of 2020. Hello, I am Michael James. I'm a linguistics major and I will be transferring to ASU in 2021. Hi, my name is Devin Sturgeon. I'm currently uh, majoring in education and I will be transferring to GCU after my time at GCC. Hi, my name is Sean White. I'm a business major. I'll be transferring to Missouri Valley College on a near full ride debate scholarship because I won nationals and I won't miss an opportunity to talk about it. <laughs> And uh, I'm the head coach at GCC. I came down in 2016 uh, from the Midwest. I, I'm Keeper Store. I did my undergrad at Kansas Wesleyan University and my graduate school program at the University of Central Missouri. Hi, I'm Destiny Sire. I uh, graduated from Barrett's Honors College, but I also competed for GCC for three years, and I run all the debate side of things. <laughs> Hello, I'm Angelica Grigsby. I'm the district coach, so the new district coach. I come to you all from Southern California, so I originated, uh, just finished my master's at Cal State Fullerton, coached for four years as the director for, of individual events at Concordia University, Irvine, and to all the presidents of all the colleges here, I'm really excited to get to work with all of your students. I've gotten to meet a couple of them, and it's great, so thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren Schwartzwalter. I'm a residential faculty member at Glendale Community College. And I work as the, as the team business manager, and I handle all their transportation and lodging arrangements. So it's been a wonderful opportunity, and we thank you for your support. Again, thank you, for everybody, for having us here tonight. Uh, we, we do have more members of our team, but after 18 students went to Moore Park College last weekend, we came down with a flu bug for a few of them. And then I guess I can't complain that some of them said they had to study for finals. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Mrs. McGrath. Thank you. Uh, it's so wonderful to see my shopping partner here, Dr. Reed. I haven't seen you at the grocery store for a long time. It's fun to see you again. Thank you for your hard work with this team. And I'm on the scholarship committee for the Arizona Nursery Association. I did not catch the name of the gal who's going to be an agriculture major, but I want you to get on the internet, look up the Arizona Nursery Association and our scholarship program, and I would like you to apply for a scholarship. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Well, uh, thank you so much to all the students who came tonight and to the faculty and to the coaches. Uh, it, it's a very inspiring story that you have to tell, and we wish you continued success uh, in the future. Dr. Thank you. Uh, they, thank you, Dr. Thor. I also thank them for all the work that went into what we have today to celebrate. And I did promise the students who are tired and need to study that they could actually walk out right after the presentation. So you can go home now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good
We are now at Citizens Interim. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the governing board about items that are not on the agenda for discussion today. In compliance with the open meeting law, the governing board will neither discuss nor take action on issues raised during this portion of the agenda. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. We have one request to speak, Karen Gebhardt. President Thord, members of the board, Chancellor Harbor of Marinette, my name is Karen Gibbard. I'm here about the drag queen story time that was held at one of your MCC libraries in Scottsdale. The event had two drag queen men who read life things, <laughs> okay, theme stories to the very young children at a tax supported library. These performances are aimed at our very young children. I have petitions here that citizens sign expressing their disapproval for allowing such performances. My hope is that you will reconsider any future drag queen shows at our tax-supported college libraries. Thank you. We now move to consideration of the consent agenda items. All items with an asterisk are consent matters unless they are removed from the consent agenda at this time. Do any board members or the chancellor wish to remove any items from the consent agenda? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It, the consent agenda has been moved and seconded. Advisory vote, Ms. Maya. Board vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The consent agenda passes 7-0. We are now at first readings. 12.1 uh, is an amendment to administrative regulation 1.15 on travel. Any comments or questions? Uh, monitoring reports, 13.1, employments and separations from October the 19th through November the 25th. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, business services, 14.1, the budget analysis report, fund one for the five months ending November 30th, 2019. Any comments? Our questions. Uh, we are now at uh, governing board reports. Mr. Hendricks. Is my microphone on? I guess it is. Um, I guess current events depends on how current they are. I haven't been in the country for the last month, so I'm going to talk about something from Is a year ago. Yeah. yeah, you're on. I said uh, as current events, I'm not sure how current current events are, but I've been out of the country for the last month, so I'm going to talk about something from maybe a year ago. We had uh, two emeritus awards tonight for uh, uh, Marcus Denton and for Randy Wright. And uh, I've interacted with these two gentlemen when they were, when they were still working. And I've probably interacted with maybe 100 students that were influenced by these two men in their, in their fine arts work that they did. And in the the classes they taught, they did more than just show up and teach their classes and, and put in their hours in the daytime. They created a, a culture with these students, almost a fellowship, where these students worked together. It wasn't just in class, it was outside of class, it was for programs they put on, it was at home. Uh, it was a unity that got together if one of them had challenges in life in general. And the, the accolades that we read for them are, are outstanding. but that they are dwarfed in comparison to things these people did to influence the personal lives of these students and to motivate them and keep them going. Some of these students from 10 years ago still interact with these men for direction and advice. And I, uh, I wish I had spoken up sooner because I see Mr. Wright has left. I really would like to have thanked him and recognized him further. Uh, and if Mr. Denton had been here even more so, I, Mr. Denton came to a board meeting maybe a year ago and we had some of his students come and make a presentation, and I described it at that time that I've, I've had many of these students in my home, and they, uh, I told a story back then, they were teasing my daughter because she's, 
she went to NAU and didn't get to be in Mr. Denton's class, and they, they would tease her she was going to miss the Denton experience, which was a real phrase that the students use for having the pleasure of interacting with Mr. Denton when he taught his classes. And I, I remember the last uh, program that uh, the two of them put on, it was a year ago, two years ago, it was when they were retiring, and uh, Mr. Wright had his mother come up on the stage at the end of the program, which you wouldn't usually expect. It's usually for students, it's for uh, people that are active. Well, Mr. Wright brought his mother up, and I don't know how old his mother is, but she came up with her walker, and they helped her up onto the stage, and there was a little platform where the conductor normally stands. It was probably elevated, I don't know, 10 inches maybe. And they put her walker up there, and she sat on the little seat on the walker. And she conducted the last performance her, herself. And I still remember sitting there, because I was maybe the second or third row, and the entire time I sat there, I was afraid that walker was going to fall off that platform. Because <laughs> I, I, I was hoping they put the brakes on there, because she was going, her arms were going, and you could see the, the walker wiggle a little bit. Uh, but but it's, it, it may seem odd that the person organizing the event brings up his mother to conduct the last, the last program, but you could see the room and the students and the culture, the love and the, the companionship that was there. Uh, Everybody in the room was standing when, they, when, when she finished and when they left. And, and the work these guys did, there are just no words to describe these two men. And I'm sure the third Emeritus Award is a great person also. But I, the, the two on top that I know of personally, I saw what they did. I saw the effects they had on students' lives. In fact, I talked to a student today that had, had been affected by Mr. Denton. I had lunch with him today as he was telling me things that uh, he'd been in contact with him. And, uh, Mr. Dent is somewhere out of the country, and they're still in communication with him. He's not even here. He's been gone for months, and they're still in communication with him now. That, that's the level of relationship that they built. I, I just, I could talk all night about these two men. They are just phenomenal people, and I, I wish they were here so they could hear my comments, but I, I, hopefully I'll see them again and I'll repeat them. But thank you. You're on videotape. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dorini. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I just want to echo um, what Mr. Hendricks said. The, you know, anybody who's attended a community college knows the impact that faculty has and um, the impact that they have on us for, for a lifetime. But with that, I just want to wish everybody a happiest holidays and uh, thank you all for what a, a great first year on, on the board. Thank you. Mrs. Sullivan. I was just thinking it has been one year, hasn't it? And uh, it's been a memorable year in so many ways. It's also been a great learning year. And certainly, we can carry forward the learnings that we have. Uh, wanted to celebrate again. All of you tend to say that often. I also wanted to build on Mr. Hendricks' comments, because each time that we've had a emeritus presentation, it reminds us of the fine faculty that we have affiliated with this uh, community college system, residential, part-time, adjunct, whatever it is, your commitment, uh, I think it's called clock hour, your commitment to our students is obvious. And it's what gives us uh, both opportunity and privilege to work with you to ensure that our students do have success. and. Uh, develop the culture of learning that I know is so important to all of us. So thank you, Mr. Hendricks, for leading us off with that. Um, also wanted to comment that it was accreditation week here last week, and we were very impressed. I was personally, but I think all of us were, with the presentation at uh, Gateway Community College. And certainly, I'm going to say our fingers are crossed, but I know that you probably are shining. So congratulations to you on that. We did have an audit committee today and want to remind everyone that we're in good shape as an organization. And congratulations to Mr. Hibbs and all of his hard work with your teams and Gary, et cetera. And last, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and may it be an enjoyable season for you filled with joy and peace. Thank you, Mrs. Wynn. Um, I just want to say I am the proud mother of a PC graduate, 
So um, that was nice, and I liked that the fashion major had, they had them all dressed fashionably tonight as they presented. I thought that was, a, they didn't want that to go unnoticed. Um, I last weekend got to, and I will this weekend, uh, get to go shop with a cop. And um, so I was at your campus at 4.30, or well, 5.30 a.m. Um, this last weekend, as we gave um, a lot of kids in the community Christmas that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And it was really uh, incredible um, to see the joy and to see so many people show up um, and experience that um, with our law enforcement um, partners and from all across the district. And we'll be doing it again this weekend at Mesa. And um, it really does say how important we are to this community. Um, I don't want to um, belabor the point about how wonderful we do on our campuses. We are doing such exceptional work. Um, we are doing it through so many different avenues, through the foundation, through our educators, through our college presidents. And what I keep hearing over and over again, and I heard again tonight, the collaboration through the debate team. That's taking everybody giving their best and putting it forward. And I think that's probably, if I look to 2020, that's the most exciting thing that we can be doing um, as we go forward. And we continue to, um, if you will, spread the good news about what this community college system is and what, what we're about. I do think that uh, uh, Gateway probably knocked it out of the park. Um, it was wonderful to spend some more time there and to look at the Innovation Center. I even liked it so much I went back again today, just in case I missed anything. Um, but I really appreciate everything that um, everyone is doing, and, and as we go into 2020, putting our best foot forward. And I want to thank all the different entities inside our college that comprise our college system. And I'd like to especially thank the Chancellor for all of her teaching of us this year. It's my first year. Um, it's been quite a year, a lot to learn. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the next three years in the future that we are laying the groundwork for. So Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and um, I look forward to 2020. Thank you. Mrs. McGrath. Thank you. Uh, I was really pleased to see the musical presentation. Uh, I have uh, friends that are neighbors, uh, a lady, a sorority sister of mine, and we get together for lunch once a month, and she invited me to her home. They had a performance. They are former faculty at Glendale Community College. Uh, Jeff Morse uh, taught uh, there for quite a while, and uh, his wife, Carol. And it was the most amazing band I've ever seen. They had a trumpet, and they had a flute and everything else was percussion. They had six percussion people. They had a full set of drums. They had a man that played the uh, marimba and the bongos, and then the, uh, the other four people were all marimba and xylophone players, and uh, they really did Glendale Community College proud. It was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sarf. Well, I want to, first of all, I uh, wish everybody the greatest of holidays. We look forward to 19, or 19, huh? Uh, 2020, go figure. We are a fifth of the way through another century already for us. Uh, I did attend uh, a, an event at Mesa Community College called Girls Get IT. Uh, amazing event. Uh, a couple hundred uh, high school girls that were there to learn uh, about what Mesa and all of our colleges offer in terms of IT and STEM programs. Uh, very well done, and uh, if I was uh, their age and had it to do over again, I'd be really excited to start, uh, as I did a year ago. So um, good luck to the, those young ladies as they pursue their careers. They're going to make a big difference in our future. Ms. Maya. I, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who has helped. Is it, yeah? Can you hear me? Yeah. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who has helped me this past semester as a part-time um, part um, person who has a job, a full-time student, and sitting here on the board. It has been quite challenging, and I am tremendously grateful the semester's almost over. <laughs> and also, Mr. Gonzalez, I, I'm not sure if you want to see my grades yet. I mean, they're, they're okay. They're okay, but... <laughs> And also, happy holidays, and thank you so much for this opportunity. 
Thank you. Uh, in addition to the outstanding faculty this district has, we also have outstanding um, staff and administrators. And I am uh, very privileged this week to co-facilitate the Executive Leadership Institute uh, for aspiring college presidents from around the country. And we have a really outstanding class this year. Um, do not in the small part to two outstanding Maricopa vice presidents that are in the class, uh, Monica Castaneda of Glendale Community College and Heather Weber of Estrella Mountain Community College. And to my delight, also in the class is a member of the Gateway HLC team from last week. And I have to share that she says, you know, we're not supposed to talk about our findings, but I have to tell you, we were really, really impressed with Gateway. <laughs> so we're, we're all very optimistic for the outcome of, uh, of that visit. Um, I also want to wish uh, our students um, and our faculty and staff and administrators a uh, very uh, uh, restful and happy uh, winter break and also wish you all uh, the happiest of holidays. We are adjourned.